Good evening, sir. Hello, Mr. Bishop. Good evening.
Um, Mr. Obisha uh, Sonkane, they were sorry. Um, um, sorry, uh, the network and all that. Good, good evening and welcome to, to this class of uh, management information. My name is uh, Ibrahim Tayo. I, I will be the one to hang up part of your management information. And I pray by God's grace, the success shall be, shall be had at the end of this night by God's grace. So <clears throat> if, you can, uh, if you can hear me, please signal via the chat button, please. If you can hear me, can you hear me? Please signal via the chat button. Let me know. Just say hi if you can hear me. If you can hear me loud and clear. Yes, I can hear you. Sir. Via the chat button, please. I can hear you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, now our our my concern to about this uh, management information is that. Whoever the I pray we have a network stability this today. I go say so. Welcome. We are going to take some of the topics. Though we are not going to cover everything, but significantly we want to touch the syllabus. And what we'll be doing now is that those critical topics in the syllabus we are going to pick them, and those are the things that we are going to want to be talking about. I guess you know. So that's that's that. <clears throat> okay. Those the critical topics are what we'll be looking at now. Now, next step for today, I will be talking about budget and budgetary control system. That's what I will be starting with today. So please, I want to, I want your attention. So these are the rules of the class. The rules of the class are the students are muted on both audio and video. And it is to allow for proper coordination of that uh, of this lecture. And also, students are allowed to use the chat button. I said. At that time, you use the chat button. Students are expected to be cordial and professional when using the chat button. Please, you have to be mindful of your language if you're using the chat button. And students are advised to listen attentively during the lectures rather than writing. writing. All questions will be attended to after lectures. You can ask, but that does not mean that if you have a pertinent question to ask me during the course of the lecture, you can still ask me. And feel free to call us or shout us after the class. I hope you're getting it now. Thank you. My name is Taiwo Ibrahim, and I'm also part of the co lecturer of this. Um, of this uh, management information. So please note that. So let's let us quickly <clears throat> now let's quickly look at budget and uh, and let us look at uh, what are those things that we are concerned with when we say budget. Now, when we say budget, what do we mean by budget? Budget in a nutshell simply means a plan. When we say budget, we mean a plan, and that plan is a plan that you prepare in advance to the period in which you want to use the budget. Let's say, for instance, you want to, prepare, want to use a budget, you want to use a plan next year, you must have prepared this year. I guess me now. When you collect your salary from work, you don't just go to the market and start buying. You have to have a plan on how you are going to spend the money. I guess me, that plan now is a budget at your, what, at, your, at your house level now. Now, an organization now, how do they plan? Because if you are going to succeed as a business entity, you must be able to plan. And that plan must be expressed in monetary terms, which will show what you are expecting to receive, what you are expecting to pay, you know? And it has to be paid in advance to the period in which you want to use it. Then if you're having that kind of plan, which you express in monetary terms, and which you, need, you should have paid in advance to the period in which you want to use it, then you say you are having a what? You are having a budget in place. So in a nutshell, a budget is a plan that is expressed in monetary terms and prepared in advance to the period in which you want to use it. That's a budget. And every organization, either small or big, must have a plan, must have that budget. Because if you want to run an organization and want to be successful about it, there must be a budget to that effect. And that is what we are trying to look at under this topic. And your syllabus. Budget is a key topic in your what's in your syllabus, and it's a thing that you have to watch. You have to have a good knowledge of. I hope you're getting me now. So that's what we are looking at now. That's budgetary control. How do we use plan uh, budget? How do we use uh, how do we use budget to prepare to run the affairs of the organizations? That is what we are looking at now. In our details, I just have a steps here. After explaining what is a budget, you need to know that. What we are doing here now, we are looking at manufacturing entity. 
in manufacturing business, mostly. Because in management accounting, in, in ICANN now, management accounts, ma uh, management information, I mean, is the what? The next level of management information is performance management. That's our skill level. Why the last aspect of it is strategic performance management, SFM, at the final level. You see all these costs, all these uh, uh, MI, PM, SFM, they are meant to want to help a manager in a manufacturing entity to run the affairs of the business. I hope you are getting in such a way that they want, they will be able to maximize the profit of the entity. So whatever we are talking about in this class will be centered on a manufacturing business. I get it, not a, not a service-oriented business now. When I say manufacturing business, I mean a business that is into production of goods, like uh, production of bread, production of biscuits, production of tire, you know, that are into productive activities. I guess so most of all we'll be talking about will be centered on what's on these uh, companies that are productive in nature. So I wouldn't explain what we mean by, I wouldn't explain, I wouldn't explain what we mean by budget. I wouldn't explain what we mean by budget. Then the next thing we need to look at is what? What are the stages in budget uh, process? If you are preparing a budget in an organization, a manufacturing entity for that matter, what are the stages of preparing that budget? Now, is that this is a manufacturing business that they will, be, they will be talking about, mostly in your mind. That's one. Two, if you are doing budgets, you need to be very, very constant for conversant of the fact that there will always be a limiting factor in a organizations and when i say limiting factor a limiting factor is that factor that will affect the achievement of the organization's objectives take for instance if you are producing bread say for instance if you are producing the likely thing or variables that can affect that bread, bread productions that can affect the amount of bread you can produce and the profit you can make. Now, it is possible that it is what you have are, then you can only produce to the extent of the available flour. I hope you can, you can relate to that. It can be labor. Maybe you don't have enough baker, bakers that will run, that will run the world productions. I get you. That simply means that that baker, that uh, labor house that you are, what you are not having sufficient of is your limiting factor. That, that means that limiting factor is an item of variables in the business environment that can affect the achievement of the organization's objectives. Why I have to deviate into, into limiting factor is that if you are preparing a budget in a manufacturing business, you need to first identify what is the limiting factor. That is what is affect what is affecting or what is preventing the organization from achieving their work, their objectives. That limiting factor is very sacrosanct in budget preparations. I guess what I'm saying. Now, let me now ask you now. Let's say you can use the chat button, please. Use the chat button. Let me ask you, what is the number one limiting factor in every organization in the world? What do you think is the number one limiting factor of every organization? Can anybody tell us via the chat button? What is uh, the number one limiting factor of every organization? Number one limiting factor of every organization? Okay. So do we know number one limiting factor of every organization? Now, uh, uh, can, you, can, you, can you tell us? Uh, what, what, do you think, what do you think is the number one limiting factor of, of, of an organization? That thing 
that will prevent the organization from achieving their objectives. Okay, um, just, just sorry, the network has been the, an issue, but uh, we will we'll surely overcome it. Now, as I was saying, I, I actually explained to you that uh, one of those things that you need to take note of is what is the principal budget factor. If you are preparing a budget, if you are preparing a budget, um, you have to note what's the principal budget factor. What is that limiting factor? That's what they call the principal budget factor. Okay, I get what I'm saying now. Now, that principal budget factor, that's the first thing you need to prepare a budget for. If you are preparing a budget and organization, the first budget you have to prepare is your principal budget factor. That is the limiting factor. That, that is that thing that is limiting the organizations. That's the first thing you have to prepare. And number one limiting factor for every organization is the sales. I hope I get what I'm saying now, is the sales. You know why is it sales? It is sales because every organization will always have a constraint. A constraint in the sense that there is a limit to what you can sell per time. That means that sales is number one limiting factor for every organization. So if you want to prepare the budget for that organization, then the first budget you have to first prepare is what is your sales budget. 
that is why in the first budget process, the first thing you need to do is to first identify the principal budget factor. That's what the sales number one. That's it. That means that you now prepare a budget for that sales. That means that that will give you what's a sales budget. Hope you're getting me now. And after that, you now prepare other functional budgets. How do you know when they say functional budget? Functional budget is more of departmental budget. That's for each of the departments, production department, sales department. You know, you have prepared sales initially anyway, production department, labor department, purchasing department. All these are functional departments. And the budget for them, I will call the functional functional budget. So you look at the steps. I said you first need to identify your principal budget factor. That's your limiting factor. Then prepare a budget for that limiting factor. That's for sales. Then prepare other functional budgets like material, like labor, like overhead, all these other budgets. You prepare it. After preparing all these other projects, then what's the next one? Number four. Now. You now submit the functional budget to the budget committee for review and approval. It means that in an organization, there will always be a committee called a budget committee. And this budget committee is a committee that, that would stand to review and approve a functional budget. That's more of departmental budget. They are the ones that are commissioned to look at this functional budget and would approve them. They review them and approve them if they're OK. Now, it simply means that after I've identified principal budget factor and I've prepared the budget for the sales, that's for the principal budget factor, and I've now prepared other functional budget. Then the next one is now I submit to the work to the budget committee for review and approval. After they have now approved it, what's next? Then step five is now is to prepare the master budget. Let me let me let me say this. When you say a master budget, a master budget is an all encompassing budget that comprises of all the functional budget prepared in terms of what, in, in the form of profit and loss statement. Hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> when I say a, a, a master budget, a master budget is a budget, look at this, is a budget statement that summarizes the plans for the budget period. It means that it encompasses all other budgets in the organizations. I guess even now. So if you bring all the sales budget, production budget, labor budget, purchasing budget, you bring everything together and use it in preparing a profit statement. Then you say you ask that for a master budget. After you have prepared the master budget, one next, you now see the master budget and other supporting financial budgets should be submitted to the board of directors, that VOD for, for approval. It means that there is now another level of approval apart from the budget committee approval, which is the VOD approval. That is the board of directors approval. The board of directors want to see your master budget and all of that supporting documents. If you need to see that documentation, I hope I get what I'm saying now. You want to see the budget, the approved budget, and all that, then they go ahead and approve it. It's okay. I guess that is why we say the master budget and the supporting financial budget should be submitted to the board of directors for approval. And when we say approval, I mean, it means that. If the project is okay, what they will just need to do is to just say okay and sign in and award and approve it. That means that it becomes operational. That is that for what for that. Then you now say the next step, which is step seven, is that what they do. After they have approved project, what's next? You need to start telling each of the managers their responsibilities, and they need to start cleaning into their responsibilities. And then you need to control the process of budgeting. I guess because anything you are doing and you do not control it, it's tendency for abuse. Hope you are getting it. So that was really I was a controlling of the work. So that's for the steps in budgeting. In budgeting. Hope you are getting what I'm saying. Now. So that is that for steps in what in preparation of budget. So for the exam purpose, you should please note these uh, steps. Now. In your pack, in your icon pack for the exam, the examiner now requires you to be able to, be able to know just two budgets. So what you are doing is just two budgets. And what are the two budgets? The two budgets are the functional budget and the, and the cash budget. That's the two budgets required to know at this level. 
at the PM level, that's performance management level, I think other budgets will have to come in place. I mean, up to about six budget now will come in place in what's in advanced level. But at this or my level, which is the costing level, the two budgets that you are required to know are the functional budgets, add wrong, and the and the cash budget. So let us first take the functional budget today, but in subsequent class, we will start talking about what cash uh, cash budget. <laughs> Let me now ask. If you get to the exam and the examiner asks you to prepare the following functional budget, what will be that thing that will first ring in your head regarding functional budget? You need to first, you need to quickly know that functional budget is all about what? All about uh, functional budget <laughs> is all about a departmental budget. I get what I'm saying. It means that for that organization, there are different departments that are, that are actually doing different things for the purpose of achieving the collective goals of the organization. Now, each of these departments, each of these departments, they must have a plan, and that plan is the budget, and that budget is what we call the functional budget. So if you have a functional budget, you should know there's a budget of different departments of what of an organization. And when I say organizations now, what I mean is a production organizations, the manufacturing organizations. Now, when they now ask you to prepare a a functional budget, what are the steps? And what, what are the what are those budgets you are required to prepare? And what are the orderliness of preparation? Don't forget, there is an order in which those budgets we have to prepare. If the examiner is not straightforward as to tell you that prepare this, prepare this, prepare that, if they ask you to prepare all relevant functional budgets, you should know that you don't just prepare them anyhow. One will lead to the other. The other will lead to the other. I guess what I'm saying now. So you need to know which one will be prepared first, which one will follow, which one will follow as, as one in that order. I guess. It. And that's why you are in this class. And that's why we call it a special course. I guess. It. Because our view is to what is to give you what you need to what to pass this exam. So now if you're in the exam and they give you a functional budget to prepare, the first one you will prepare out of this functional budget is that of the limiting factor. You know, I told you in the in the words in that steps of uh, budgeting that you identify the limiting factor. So the budget that you first prepare is the limit. And I showed you the number one budget is the sales budget. That's why if you look at this chart I put here, and I'll give you the orderliness of that preparation. The first one is the sales budget because I must first know what to sell first before I know that thing. Because that sales is what brings in money. I get you now. Our money is what sustains the, the environment or the business. I hope you understand what I'm saying now. Therefore, the sales budget is the number one budget that you must prepare. That's, that means that after you have prepared the sales budget, what's the next budget that is? Hello, Prof. We cannot hear you anymore. We can we can see you clearly. I think your your internet is fine. Maybe just check the volume.
Now, um, sorry. So, Now, as I was explaining to your daughter, I said we have a sales budget. In the area of sales budget, we have a production budget. Now, is your production budget that will not lead to your work, your material usage budget? Because if I know what to produce, it's easier for me to know how much to use in material. Now, after the material is the budget, then if you know how much you are going to use, then it will be easier for you to know how much of the material you are purchasing from the market. After I get to what I'm saying, now, that means that your material usage budget will be what you need to prepare before you prepare your material purchase budget. Prof, we can see your screen. Uh, 
Okay, you can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, Mr. Obisheson, I mean, Obisheson, I'm so sorry. Yes. I have changed, I have changed the network now. I hope uh, I will have a stability in the in the network now. So I'm so sorry. I think the next uh, one hour thereabouts should be a stable, a stable period. Because so I just changed the C, I just swap it now. Okay, let's continue. Now, so we have seen the word the steps now. So in the in the order of preparing the budget now, what we need to do is to what is to ensure that uh, you follow these steps. I mean, consensuously, please. What you need to do is to ensure you follow the steps consensuously. Now, let's look at steps now. Let's look at how, what are the building up to your questions in the exam? When they are building up your question in the exam, how do they let's look at step one. How do they prepare the state's budget? Let's see. Assuming to determine the state's budget, as we are asked to prepare the state's budget in the exam, what will you do? We multiply the sales unit by the respective words selling price. It means that how much are we selling? I mean, units times how much the selling price we are looking at selling them. Look at it. As many company produces two products, product A is two naira per unit, and also sold 500 units of B at one naira per unit. You now say require prepare the sales budget in units and in what? You are given the sales in units, you are given the selling price. So what you need to do is to multiply the sales in units by the word by the selling price to get the total sales value. That is how we prepare this budget. Let us look at how this budget can be prepared. In a sales budget in units, so those are the sales are 1,000 for A, I mean 1,000 for A and 500 for B. You can see the 1,500 and their selling price are two naira, one naira. Two times 1,000 is 2,000 naira. 500 times one is 500 naira, which is 2,500. Now, that's a sales budget. So it means as, as simple as this, this is a sales budget. This is a budget because you can't be, you can't compare this with this now. This is a statement for this is a budget. That's the way it is. Just multiply the sales you are looking at making and the what and the respective selling price. Multiply it together and you get your what your sales uh, budget. Now the next thing is your production budget. I told you that if you want to prepare your program for that, you must what? You must start it from your sales, is it not? Then it means that you must first know how much are you even selling in questions anyway? How much is your sales, which you have determined initially? You know, our sales was actually a unit now. We were looking at selling 1,500. So the total value is now 2,500 based on the selling price uh, given. Now, if you now want to prepare your production budget, your production project will be prepared by first taking note of what you want to sell. What you want to sell. You are looking at selling 1,500. Then, how do you now determine what amount you are going to produce? To determine what amount you are going to produce, look at the next step. Step two, which is the production budget. To determine the production budget, you will add the closing stock of finished stocks to the sales in units and less the opening stock of finished stock. Finished goods. What does that mean? It simply means that. If I am to determine the sales of what, and the, the production of what of bread, and I know what I'm going to sell of bread, then what I will do is that I will add what would be my estimate of closing stock to that sales, and I will less what would be my estimate of opening stock. You know, when I say opening stock, that is what you brought forward from last year. When I say closing stock, what you are left with at the end of this year of that bread. If I add that closing stock to the sales and I less opening stock, what I'm going to get is my production up for that period. So in the exam, if you are preparing your production budget, your production budget will be prepared by saying sales plus closing stock of the bread or the product minus the opening stock of the product. That will give you what? Will give you what you are producing per time. So let's look at this. Let's say for instance, continue from that illustration one, now, so assuming from the first example, assuming the opening stocks and closing stocks of the finished stocks of product A and B are as follows. Assuming the opening stock is of A and B are as follows. The opening stock are 200 and 400 units. I get it in them. That's the opening stock 
while the closing stocks are 100 and 300 units. You now ask to require, determine the production in units of product A and what? And B. How many units are you producing of product A and B? Then what do you do? You start with that sales that we got the other time. You add the closing stock of the finished goods and you less the opening stock of the finished goods. What you get is what you have produced for the period. Look at it. It means that if I want to prepare my production budget now in the exam, I will say product A and B, how many units are we selling? We are selling 1,000 units and 500 units of A and B. I hope you remember where we got the 1,000 units and 500 units from. You know, we got it from our sales in units initially, 1,000 and 500 units. So far, so far that is your sales in units, 1,500. Then what do we do? We now add our closing stock. How much is our closing stock you are given? Of oh, that, oh, that goes 100 and 300. Then you now list your words our opening stock of 200 and 400. Whatever we are getting is now our production in world in, in unit. So that means that we are going to produce 900 of product A and 400 of product B. So in the exam, if I'm looking for my production budgets, I'm going to add my closing stock to my sales and I will list my opening stock. That you should know. Now, after that production budget, we look at the steps I gave initially. Again, the next thing is to determine material usage budget. Please don't forget, material usage is different from material purchased. Usage means that how much are we using for the productions? But purchase means how much are we going to buy from the market? You know, there are two different things. So if you are asked to prepare the material usage now, then you now need to make reference back to how much you produce. Because if I want to produce 1,000 bread, and I will need two kg of flour to produce one of that bread, then how many kg? Let me ask you, uh, uh, okay, Nde, if I'm to produce 1,000 bread, and I will need two kg of flour to produce each of that bread, then how many kg of flour will I need to produce that 1,000 bread? What will be the answer? If I'm to produce 1,000 bread, and the kg I will need to produce each of that bread is two, two kg to produce one of that 1,000. Then how many kg of that flour will I use to produce all the 1,000 bread? Can you tell me, please? <clears throat> Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to be sure Mr. Kennedy is on is online. Mr. Kennedy. Hello. The, the, continue, sir. Uh, no, I need to ascertain it. Okay. Let me ascertain it so that I can be so sure. I know it's on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I uh, just signaled now. Uh, you know, it's the only one online. So we have to be so sure that we're actually with him. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I've seen your response. Yeah. 1,000 times two. Thank you. 2,000. Thank you. I just want to be sure. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> so far we know that it's going to be 2,000 kg. Then that simply means that if you are now given a scenario in the exam, come in, one up. Okay. <clears throat> now, you can see these are the production we made the other time. Then we're now looking for materials. Let's say, for instance, you're not giving the material information. Now, let's look at this. We are still continuing the procedures, please. In continuation from illustration two, assuming two types of materials are used to produce the product A and B. Assuming you are using two types of materials to produce product uh, A and B, and the materials are product are material J and K. Please don't mix materials and products together. Product is bread, 
and materials is flour. Now, assuming two materials are used, the materials are J and K to produce the product A and B, then they now say with the following unit of material J and K to produce each, each unit of product A and B, they're now given how many units of material J and K will be needed to produce product A and B. Look at the material J and K and look at the product A and B. Now, for the material J and K now, we will need two kg of material J to produce one A. I will need four kg of material K to produce one A. We need one kg of material J to produce one B. I will need three kg of material K to produce one B. Then you now say required, prepare the material usage budget. Then what will now be the material usage budget now in this instance? Now, to determine the material usage budget now, I told you your material usage budget will be a function of your production. You know, we already know that our production was uh, for product A is 900 and product B happens to be 400. Now, if you go and check it very well, you can see what we got here. The production of A happens to be 900 units, while B happens to be 400 uh, units. So in this instance there now, if you now want to determine how much is the material you will use to produce the 900 and 400 units of A and B respectively, you will now see material usage budget which is the material J and K, and the products are product A and B. For the product now, for product A, we have 900 units, and for the product B, we have 400, uh, 400 units. That's what you produced. But if you check it, we will need 2 kg of J to produce 1 A. 2 kg of J to produce 1 A. But how many A are you producing? 900. Then how many J will be needed to produce all the 900? It will be 2 times 900, which is 1,800 kg. So 1,800 kg is the quantity of J that will be needed to produce product A. And how many kg of K will be needed to produce product A is 4 kg. If 4 kg can produce one, then how many kg will be used to produce the 900? That will be 4 times 900, which is 3,600. Then you have been able to determine how many material J and K will be needed to produce product A. Now, if you now go to product B, you now say for J and K now, what is the material of J and K we need to produce product B now? We need how many material of J? That's one kg, right? And we need how many material of K? We need three kg to produce each of what? Each of these materials to produce a B, product B. Then so far is one kg to produce one of what of B. Then we now see how many B are we producing? We are producing 400 units of B. And now we need one kg of J to produce one of that. Uh, 400. Then how many material J will be needed to produce all these 400 units? It will be one times 400. Why for K it will be three times 400, which is a 400 and 1,002 respectively. With this now, I've been able to know how much material will be used to produce A and B. Then in total, now, how many material J do we need? We had this together. How many material K do we need? We had this together. So that will give you an instance into the material usage. You can see the material usage now is now 2,200 kg for J and 4,800 kg for what? For K. So that signifies that or that implies that what? This would be the material usage. And this project is a material usage project. So it means that if they want to produce this number of units of kg, number of kg of the material will be needed. 2,200 kg of material J will need to produce A and B and then. 1,800 kg of K will be needed to produce A and B. That's material usage. Now, step four is now material purchase. Now, the question for that is that, uh, how do you determine your material purchase? You determine your material purchase from your material usage. Because if I know how much I'm going to use, then it will be easier for me to know how much I'm going to purchase because I will need to hard back my closing stock of material to the material I use, and I less my opening stock of material so that I can get total material usage in the what in total material purchase in the period. It means that if I use 2,200 kg and 4,800 kg, is that the amount of material I'm going to purchase? No, you need to consider how much you're having in your stock. Because what you're having in your stock will give you a view of what you should buy in the market. Because it's not possible that I have excess of stocks in the world in my store, and I decide to stick go ahead to what to go and buy excessively. That will not work. Hope you're getting it. That is why 
if you are determining the purchase budget, which is material purchase budget, that material they use, you have your closing stock of material and you lose your opening stock of material, whatever you get is your material purchase in, uh, in units. So if you look at it, continuation from illustration three now, assuming the opening stock of material J and K are 500 and 1,000 kg, respectively, and their closing stocks are 200 kg for J and uh, 300 kg for what for K, you now ask you, prepare the material purchase budget. Immediately I have material purchase, I'll just quickly go to material usage. I'll just add the closing stock of material and less the opening stock of material. Then yeah, whatever I have is now my material purchase budget. And I look at it now. Now material usage is 2,200 kg and 4,800 kg. That's material usage. If you go back, you will see that usage. Please. You can see the usage. Material usage is 2,200 kg and then 4,800 watts kg. So far, I already know that. Then I will now say, I will now add my closing stock of material and less my opening stock. The closing stock of material is 200 and 300 kg. Why the opening stock of material are 500 and watts? 1,000 kg. If I add 200 back to the material usage, and I less the opening stock of 500, I'll get what material I purchase in units. So material purchase is more of a material usage add closing stock of material and less opening stock of what? Opening stock of uh, opening stock of material. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now. So that's that's how to get your material purchase. It must be premised on your material, your material usage. So aside that, we now go to material purchase budget in value. You know, this one is a unit. I hope you know the difference between unit and value. When I say unit, what I mean is that how many in quantity that you are able to what? How many in quantity that you value now? Or how many of the quantity you are able to buy? Whatever you are talking about, it is much. Yeah. Well, we are saying in value now. Value simply means that what you are actually looking at what is the monetization of that unit. That's the value. Now, let's look at it. Let's look at it. If we want to now determine the purchase budget in value, this is determined by multiplying the material purchase unit by their respective purchase price per kg. It means that how much are you buying each of the kg of the material? If you know the price of each of the kg of material, then if I multiply it by the Material you purchase in unit to give me the monetary implications of the words of that purchase, which is in uh, material purchase in words in value. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, therefore, let us now look at it in illusion five. In continuation from illusion four, assuming the purchase price of material J and K are what uh, 50 cobalt and 20 cobalt, respectively, required, prepare the material purchase in value. So in this instance, then I will now need to go ahead and prepare the material purchase in value. What we need to do? All you need to do is that you just need to look at what is the material purchase in units, which is this. Look at the material purchase in unit one, nine, and four, one. If that's the material they purchase in units, then you will now see how much are they buying each of these material, because I need to know how much they are buying. And they stated it in the question. They said you are buying each of these materials for what? J is at 50 cover. Why the what? Why the second one is at what? Is at 20 cover. You can see 50 cover and what and 20 cover respectively. So how do you now get the material purchase in value now? Then I will just multiply the material purchase in units by the material purchase in value uh, by the by the by the buying in price. Look at it. Material purchase in units are one nine and four one kg of J and K respectively. But they said they are using 50 cover and 20 cover respectively. Don't forget, cover is different from naira. Open the time I'm saying now. Your cover is different from what? From Naira. When they give you 50 cover, half of what? One Naira is 50 cover. Look, it's half of one. I get me now. So that's what I'm the price. You get this. And for K2, you what you get? Get its own respective value. 
Now, and I told you the other time that labor also. So it's dependent on what productions. I guess I'm saying so it can also give you information about uh, about labor. Now let us pass questions. I'm actually having your past question up here. Now the following data represents the projections made by Rosco Limited for the coming year. In this past question, in the recent past question, there were six, seven guys, and they said the following data represents the projections made by Rosco Limited for the coming year. So Rosco Limited there was actually making a projection of, of his, what is his activities for the coming year. What are the projections? Number one, it plans to sell 30 naira and 400,000 units of product B at 25 naira per unit and 500,000 units of product C at 20 naira per unit. That's the proposed sales. I guess in how many units of each of the products are they looking at selling? They are lighted it and their own and their respective prices. Hope you're getting it. That's one. Two, the second information is that to produce one unit of product A, the company requires two units of material X, two units of material Y, and three units of material what? Z. They're now giving us the material specification of what of producing each of the products. I get it now. So produce one, or one unit of each of the products A, the company requires two units of material X, two of material Y, and three of material Z. To produce one unit of products B, you know they are A, B, and C. I guess in the product, the company require three units of material X, two units of material Y, and one unit of material Z. Now the next one is to produce one unit of product C. That's to produce one unit of C. The company requires one unit of each of material X and what X, Y, and what and Z. That's to produce one unit of product C. It means that the requirements of the materials for X, Y, and Z are just one unit. I get what I'm saying now. So please note that. And material X costs one and a half fifty cover per unit. That's the cost of material X per one. Five material Y costs one and a half eighty cover per unit. And what material Z costs two naira per per unit. You now ask us. You are required to prepare the following. What are you meant to prepare? One, you are prepared to prepare sales budget in Naira. That's the value. You are required to prepare material budget in units. That's material budget. And you are asked to prepare material purchase budget in Naira. That is that. So these are the requirements to prepare under this uh, question. Look at the first one. It says sales budget. Please give me one, two minutes. One, two minutes, please. Mr. Abishan, please, one, two minutes.
Okay, thank you. Now, so we are now told that to produce one unit of product C, you need one unit of material X, material Y, material Z to produce one unit of what of uh, product C. And you're now told that the material X, so cost of each of the material X is one naira fifty cover per unit, material Y is uh, one naira fifty cover per unit, and material Z is what two naira per per unit. You now see. Now, so you are required to prepare the following. Look at what it says you do prepare in the past question. Sales budget in Naira, material budget in unit, and material purchase budget in Naira. So now, the sales budget now, if you, if you look at it, you say they gave us information about this. They are expect, expected to sell 300,000 units of A and it, uh, uh, at 30 Naira, 400,000 of B and uh, at 25 Naira. And 500,000 of worth of CR29. So, those are the information I will need to produce the requirements. Look at it. In this analysis now, we now have the product A, product A, B, C, and the unit I'm selling at 300, 400, and 500,000 units. And the selling prices are 30, 25, and 20. If I must buy 30 by 300,000, If I multiply the selling price by 300,000, I will have 9 million naira. If I multiply 400,000 by 25 naira, I will have what? I will have 10 million naira. <laughs> I will have 10 million naira. If I multiply 500,000 by 20 naira, I will have 10 million naira. That means that the total sales now will now be 9 million, 10 million, 10 million. That's 29 million naira. This is a budget. A projected sales in value now. This is the budget they ask us to prepare. So please note it. the budget in this instance is what is this sales budget. Now, the next thing they ask us to prepare is what for Rosco Limited is material budget in unit. How much is the material budget in unit? How much are they using our budgets in all? Or, or, or the, the material they're using are what? The material budget in units. Next. The first thing you need to look at is what are the materials in the questions? There are three materials, and these materials are material X, material Y, and material Z. Material X, material Y, and material Z. Now, if we have it, then we now need to say, okay, we have a product A, B, C here now. And the quantity we are looking at producing our quantity, 300,000, that is for the quantity now. Now, if these are the quantity that will go, that we, are, that we are producing, then how much is the quantity per, per unit now? If this is the production now, we are producing 300,000 units of product A, 100,000 units of product B, and 500,000 units of product what, C. Then, if that's the case, in material X, how many quantity of material X will be needed to produce product A, product B, product C? Check it. Quantity of X that will need to produce a product A, B, C. Let's check the question. The quantity of X that will need to produce product A, B, C. Look at it. To produce one unit of product A, the company requires two units of material X. I guess what I'm saying. That is, you need two units of X. If you look at it, to produce one unit of product B, you need how many units of X? Three units of X, that's two, three. And to produce one unit of product C, you need one unit of what? Of X, one unit of X. That means that you need what? You need two, three, one. To produce what? Of X that will use to produce A, B, C. That's why you will see two, two, three, one. I hope you can see that now. The material quantity, of uh, X now, you know we are under X now, that will be there to produce each of A, B, C. Uh, two kg of products X, of uh, one kg of material X, two kg of material X, three kg of material X. That's what we need to produce one of each of the products A, B, C. Therefore, how do we now go? Then I will just multiply the quantity I will need, that's two kg, of X times how many units of A I'm producing? I'm producing 300,000 units of A. I'll just say two times 300,000. 
that will give me 600,000 naira. At 200,000, I get him in kg. Now, the next one, which is B now, say 400,003, which is 1.2 million kg of uh, X. I get to have said that. So, why the last one, which is which is a put C, you know, we need the one, we need the one what, one kg of X to produce each of it. And how many units are you producing? Of Thousand. That means that one times five hundred thousand will give you what? Will give you five hundred thousand indeed. Now, look at it. That's we add all this together. Six hundred, one, two, and one, five hundred thousand. You have what? Two point three million. So we have two point three million to produce A, B, C. Now, the same thing you did for hex, you will do for Y, you do for Z. This material Y and the kg of material Y that will be needed to produce A, B, and C are two, two, and one. I hope I get what I'm saying. We need two kg of X. Look at this. We need two kg of what? Of, a, of Y to produce one of A. We need two kg of Y to produce one of B. And we need one kg of Y to produce one of C. So what do we do? We just say two times 300,000, because what you are still producing is still the same thing, which is 300, 400, and 500,000. We say two times 300,000, which is what? 600,000. We say two times 400,000, you see, 800,000. And one times 500,000 will give you what? 500,000. If you add all this together, it's giving 1.9 million, which simply means that we need 1.9 million of material Y to execute the production of A, B, and C. Now, the next one is what is material Z now. Now, for the material Z, I will need three kg of material Z to produce one of A, one kg of material Z to produce one of B, and one kg of material Z to produce one of C. So what do we do? We now say three times 300,000 units. You know, everything we are doing is still refined back to this unit, kg, uh, this quantity of, of what of product, ABC. We just multiply those material K quantity by that uh, production, which will now be three times 300,000, one and one times 400 and 500,000. It's giving 900 and 400 and 500,000. Because if you say three times 300,000, will give you 900,000. One times 400 and one times 500 will give you 400 and 500. If you add them together, you have 1.8 million, which means that I will need 1.8 million of material Z to produce what? To produce product A, B, C. Now, please, that they are neither of opening or no or no closing stock. This is the material budget now. It means that <clears throat> look at it because the requirement says that we should prepare the material budget in units. I get it. Material budget in unit now is what is that that we have produced that we have produced now. This is material budget in units. That means that material budget in units is necessary is was material usage budget. And material usage budget here is now the material purchased. You know why? It's because you don't have opening or closing stock of material. You know, if you have opening or closing stock of material, I would have added the closing stock of material to the material usage. I will less the opening stock of material. But in this instance, there is no opening, there is no closing, and there is nothing like that there. So that is that for that materials. Now, aside that materials now, the next thing we are doing is what? They say you should compute the material purchase in value. When they say in value, that is in Naira. Look at the said material purchase in Naira. That's in Naira. So let us now analyze it. If you are doing material purchase in Naira, and you have been given the Naira implication of each of the material, how much is the Naira implication of each of the material? They said each of the materials will go for what? One Naira 80 cover, and one Naira 50 cover for X. One IIT cover for Y and then two Naira per unit for Z. That's 1.5, 1.8, and two Naira. That's what you use to multiply the material usage or material projects. Now look at it, you now see, you know, this is the quantity of the material now, right? So how much is the cost per unit? This is CPU, cost per unit. Now cost per unit are one Naira 50 cover for material X, 
One naira eighty cobble for material Y and two naira for <clears throat> two naira for material Z. <clears throat> what do you do? You just multiply that cost per unit by the number of units of that material. You have three point four five, three point four two, and three point six. Add it together, you have ten million four hundred seventy thousand. Don't forget to put naira sign because this happens to be in what in uh, in naira. I hope that that's what I'm saying now. So that is that for that. So the next thing we are going into now is what is uh, another question. Look at another question, your past question. It said, distinguish briefly between what? Short-term and long-term budget. Distinguish briefly between long-term and short-term budget. And what is aspirational and ideal budget? And that's that. And I say the B part is, if the budgeted sales of Ade Engineering Limited for year 2017 are as follows, that is, if the budgeted sales, what they are looking at selling are as follows, you know, these are the product, product X, product Y, product Z now. And the sales they are looking at making or selling is a 25,000 of X, uh, 23,000 of Y, and 20,000 of Z. And their selling prices are 13 naira, 25 naira, 27 naira per unit. And they say inventory at the beginning of 2017 are as follows. Now the inventories are for product X, Y, Z. The opening inventory at the beginning are 8,000, 8,000, and 7,000 for X, Y, and Z. You are now told that the marketing director intends to run a marketing campaign towards the end of 2017, and has therefore requested for inventory level to be increased at the end of 2017 as follows. This is that. You need to increase, the, you need to, to have your closing stock to be a, a function of your opening stock. If they say you are increasing your, your stocks now, X now will now be increased by 25%. What does that mean? It means that it was 8,000 before, you increase it by 25%. This one, Y was actually 8,000 at the beginning, you increase it by what? 55% to get the closing. Y, Z was 7,000 at the beginning, you increase it by 25% to get the closing. So that's that. They now say that you can to prepare the following sales budget for the year 2017 and production budget in units for the year 2017. So it just has to prepare the sales and production budget. That's what your house was to prepare. Now let's look at it. When it says short term budget, that's a budget with short term period of implementations. A children, a budget for work for just a short term period. One minute, please. A budget for short term. Uh, Short-term period. Now, a budget for short-term, uh, short-term period. That's uh, a short-term. Uh, Budget. It's usually no more than a year anyway. When you are preparing a budget and the budget you are preparing are actually is actually no more than a year. They say that budget is the worst, the short term budget. Now, if you look at this, it can be for a month, a quarter, a yearly, and so on. We are asked if you say long term budget, these are the budgets, these are the budgets with long period of implementations, longer than 12 calendar months. The longer the budget period. The greater the likelihood for species or facts to change. So a project that is likely to want to run for more than one year, I guess you know.
I quickly look at that process. They said, I did engineering limited sales budget. Obviously, sales budget is easier to what is easy to what to look into. Just say the units of each of the productions and the what and the selling price. So we have the selling price are 30, 25, and 27. 30 times 25,000, we have it to be 30 naira. 25 times 23,000, we have it to 575,000. 20 times 27 is 540,000. That is like 1 million 865,000. Uh, That's in Naira. Because these are the what the sales in units and this is selling uh, prices. You have the sales, uh, this is sales in Naira. Now, if the sales should prepare the production budget, I hope we know how to prepare production budget. Just say the sales in units add the desired closing inventory unless you open the inventory. You know, the other time they said our closing inventory will be such that you need to increase your opening inventory by 25%, 55%, and 25%. Can so you now see I'm increasing the 8,000 by 25%? I'm increasing the 8,000 by what? By another 55%. Why for Z? I'm increasing it by 25%. Because they stated in the question that uh, X closing stock should be increased by what? If, if you have an increase of 25%, 25%. why Y? 55% and what? And Z is 25%. This will give us the closing inventory. So if this is our sales that we got the other time, we had our closing inventory that we arrived at here. I will not let the opening inventory because we are doing the opening inventory in the questions. I hope I get it. So the unit produced will now be 27,000, 27,400, and 21,750. And that solves that. So what we need to do in a term is to be able to understand the the question you are, you are given, the way they are, the structure of the question, and uh, that will give you an insight <clears throat> into how you are going to resolve, resolve the questions. That is that for today. I hope you are getting me. So what we have actually learned today in summary is that we learned what is our budget. And we say our budget is a plan that will prepare in advance to the period in which you want to use it. That's one. Two, you said there are steps in what in the budgetary process. I want of it, the first steps is what is that you need to what prepare your budget for the work for the sales. I guess with that sales budget. Now after that, and now explain again that uh, after that you now go into preparing the functional budgets. I mean approval by the budget committee and so on and so forth. All these are at the prepare master budget and so on. And from there, I now move on to explain the step, the what the what the orderliness of the creation of the functional budgets. I said those other units are what? You need to know your sales budget. After our sales budget, you know what you need to produce our production budget. After production budget, then you need to know what is the material usage and material purchase budget and even the labor budget. And from there, you are able to solve questions, which are your past questions, two past questions. So in the next class, in my own next class, I will conclude uh, these questions uh, with you. And I will, I will look at the last question there, number three. Then we move on to another area of the budget, which is the car share budget. So that's where we are going to solve today. Sorry for the itchy network. We pray that it will not happen next time. I guess we are having rain. Really nice. so I actually am feeling badly. So we have to struggle with it, but at least we are able to overcome. Thank you to, to an excellent. Place. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Obisha, so kindly. Thank you so much. I prayed by God's grace that it was your, your exam. You are going to what? You are going to pass it. You're not going to. Have a nice time, Mr. Obisha. So, if there is any question you can ask me, or you ask me via the what? Via the. What's up? So I want to say thank you so much. My host. Thank you, sir. All my right, host. Sir. All right, sir. My host. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.